Hey, Jay here. We're gonna give you some tips on installing a recluse slave cylinder right now. Okay, so this slave is different than the stock one because it's billet aluminum. It's not cast, also coated, uh, so it can be a lot stronger and more, you know, predictable, longer lasting, like less heat being created. Um, they also have adjustable ones for those with auto clutches. Since we have just a conventional clutch with a torque drive recluse, we went ahead and went with this slave. Okay, so we remove our cover here and we're gonna drain all the fluid out. Okay. Down here we remove our filler rubber plug and then we're gonna break this loose and suck out all the fluid before we have a big old mess. Okay, it's not critical to have the cool vacula tool, but it sure helps. Now we can start busting these bolts loose. There's only three bolts that hold it on. Now we can pick this up to here. Should be able to kind of stay up there out of our way. Okay, so I went ahead and put one of the bolts back in because I kind of got ahead of myself. You want to loosen this banjo up here first. I got a rag here to catch the excess fluid that we didn't get out of the line. And you want to have that, like I said, I got one bolt in there kind of just snugged up and that allows us to be able to pull this out. We'll, we'll kind of clean this off with contact uh, cleaner right now. Okay, so with all the, all three bolts out, this wire, if you needed more slack, you could cut that zip tie to give you a little bit more room. We'll see if we can, if we have to do it or not. Just, just like that. We pulled the stock one off, and one of the things you notice straight away is that this one has a rubber seal here, going around here for the, di they call it diaphragm seal, and right away they tell you in the book, that's why it's good to read it, that the stock one does not require, the, the recluse one does not require, so some people could try pulling this off and putting it on here thinking that's where it goes, but this, this is good to go as it is. I'm also gonna pour a little bit of fluid in here right now. Now we're just using our good uh, brake fluid. And I'm just gonna do this so that we know we get some in here kinda uh, good. This is how Ratto taught me to do it. Good student, Jay. Uh, Recluse does have some really good instructions that I, that I like. That's one thing I really do like that they do. And also, they have really good tech support. Of course, typically when you're doing this, it's at 10 o'clock on the night before you want to use it. If you're looking for anything dirt bike related, parts, gear, anything like that, head over to our website or the link in the description below and click on the Rocky Mountain link. From there, you'll be able to see all of our top picks and much more. It's a great place to find all the dirt bike parts that you need. So in here, you kind of got to go in a little side because of the chains in your way. Um, but you, you don't really have to move it. And I can feel it right now pushing against that, that, that uh, push rod. At this point, I'm holding it. I'm going to have Cody come in here, hold this, and I'm going to have him put the two lower bolts in. Now he's going to get the other one started. You notice how he just put it in like halfway. You know, when you're doing bolts and lining stuff up, you can go a little further, like three-fourths of the way. That allows us to be able to... Yeah, okay. Now we can put this one on. Is this... No, I think we got to we gotta get this on first. So we got these two new crush washers. So one's going to go on here. And the one's gonna go below. Cody will hold that up for us. I think if I could see get, taking that thing all the way off to be out of your way if you're really struggling, or if you didn't have a third hand. Okay. 
I like that. That's good. Now we can put this bolt in. And now we're going to be able to tighten all three of them. Wrong one. Let's get this one tight. Now this one, with this guard on, can, can be a little bit of a chore. You could put the Torx bit on to get the inside if you had to. So the 27 Torx will hit the inside of that, of that bolt. And you can look up your stock Torx settings if you are so inclined. And we have the link in our Google Doc to the uh, KTM spec pages with those Torx settings. Okay, so now I'm going to get this good and snug. Now that everything's tight, I can tighten this all the way. Okay, that's good. Since our bike's all ready, I have this bag up here so we don't do any damage to our nice, pretty grip and everything before we shoot it. Ready? I just leave, leave it out. Okay. Ready? Yep, yep. careful because we don't want it to run out really quick. So when we're doing the brake bleeding here, before our compressor kicks on, I'm going to give you some uh, good tips. Um, if you don't have a power tool like this, you have to pump it by hand or back bleed it, which some people have some videos for. I like having an air system with this. This is a vacuola. There's some other ones. We have some links to some on Amazon that are way cheaper now. Looking good? So the big key is not running out of fluid up top there, obviously. And that the the master cylinder up there is very small where it holds fluid. And we're using good high temp fluid. Now Cody's gonna pump the brake with one hand. I, I pump the clutch, give it like four or five, then hold it in. Holding. And now I'm gonna stop doing the power and just bleed like this. Okay, go ahead, Cody. And we can actually see bubbles down here when it when it happens. Hold it. Holding. And I say go. I have a little system. I'll say hold and go. Hold. Go. Hold. Go. Hold. Go. Hold. Go. Hold. Okay, now we're getting basically no bubbles coming out down here. I think if you come in here with the camera, you can see how we're solid in, in our fluid. Go. Hold. Got a bubble there. Go. Hold. Go. Hold. Go. Hold. Go. How's it feeling? It's kind of weird getting a clutch backwards. Yeah. Huh? So I'm gonna adjust the lever out a little bit. Yeah, okay, hold that. Okay. Go. Yeah, that got a lot more. And so I think the key is also Cody's letting it all the way out. So you, that seems to get a little bit more bubbles going. Okay, hold it. Okay. Go. Hold. Hold. Let me feel it. I think it was feeling pretty good. Oh, it feels pretty good. We'll take a little bit out. We'll get that level down a little bit. Okay, hold it. Hold it. And you're going to tell me when the level's good. Go. Hold. Hold it. Go. We're good at the level. Okay. Well, now I can take any more out then. Go. We're good? Good. Okay. Okay, so it's always a good idea to always put some grease on these. And I like to put it on this convex part and in, in this part right here, the concave part of this cover. That's where they will gall up is there. Not so much the threads. The threads really usually aren't the problem. It's usually right in there where water seeps in there and corrodes and they'll, they'll bind up. Cody's got our other one already. And now we, we kind of got some brake fluid all over and grease. So we're going to clean that off with some contact cleaner and a and a good rag get these and these don't got to be overly tight just good and snug 
I will say I like these torques on this kind of thing. They don't strip out as much as say an Allen, I mean a uh, Phillips would. Okay, so you can put a zip tie over this to let it bubble up overnight. Same thing as you would do with the front brake. Um, we got these really cool 3D printed pieces that will hold it right there. We'll let it just sit like that overnight to help it bleed out, but it feels really good already. Okay, so that's a wrap on installing the clutch slave. Pretty simple process. Um, if you need to rebuild one, it'd be, you know, that process of bleeding would be the same. But as far as rebuilding it, we do have a video on that. I'm not sure where we have that. I think it's on Instagram. If you go to our Google Drive, a Google Doc, it'll be on there. You can email us if you have any questions. Hopefully you like that. If you like that kind of content, uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that. Right, Rado? Exactly. Whatever you do, stay uh, riding. We'll see you. <laughs> know where you're going with the number one GPS app, accessing 500,000 miles of trails and roads, open dates, and public lands. Plan your routes before you head out with the new state-of-the-art route builder. The Elite version even shows landowners and property boundaries. Download the Onyx off-road app today for a free seven-day trial. Also, to save 20%, use the discount code DBTV1.